The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever pursues a path for knowledge, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will ease for him or her a path that leads to Jannah. Allah said he will raise the people of belief from amongst you and those who were given knowledge in high degrees. Are those people who have knowledge equal to those who don't? We understand the answer. The answer is they are not equal. They are not equal in their lives. They are not equal in their actions. They are not equal in their intentions. They are not equal when they die. They are not equal in their grave. They are not equal when they are resurrected. They are not equal during the reckoning, the hisab. They will not be equal when they cross over the bridge leading over the hellfire. And they will not be equal in the gardens of Jannah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Is it an important aspect in your life that you want to always increase your knowledge of Islam? That may be the most simple of things in our lives as Muslims that we must know even though we are 25, 30, 35, 40, and some of us even 50 and 60 years old, yet we don't even have that knowledge in our lives. And I often make this distinction between knowledge and information. Knowledge is what makes you act upon it. Knowledge is what makes you get up and pray at night. Knowledge is what brings you to the masjid at Fajr. Knowledge is not memorizing some texts and some rulings and some halal and some haram and knowing this and that. If you don't act upon it, we don't consider it knowledge. So it's really important that we understand that the fruit of the knowledge we gain is to act upon. There is knowledge that every one of us has to know. And there is knowledge that is not obligatory for every one of us to know. So as for the knowledge that is essential for every Muslim to know, then I think it can be best summarized by saying the five pillars of Islam and the details of them and the six pillars of Iman and the details of them and whatever is essential for you in your personal circumstances and not just to know the pillars not to know them by heart but to know what they are so to know how to pray to know how to fast to know when the zakah is obligatory and when to give it to know what it means to believe in Allah to know what it means to believe in the angels to believe in the last day, to believe in the divine decree, to understand what that means. This is essential knowledge for every Muslim. This is obligatory upon every male and female and every young person and every old person. And then what is also obligatory for them is whatever is essential for them in their circumstances. And then there is knowledge which is a collective obligation. So what's a collective obligation? It's an obligation that we as a city, as a community, as a group of Muslims, we have to have that knowledge among us somewhere. How many people have to have it? Enough people that the need is fulfilled. Mankind will realize on the Day of Judgment that not every path of ilm knowledge will lead to paradise. Rather, some human beings, students of knowledge, attendees of halaqat, attendees of Friday sermons, people who had memorized the text and subscribed to courses, will be shocked on the day of standing when they see the angels of Allah Almighty being commanded to take them to a destination that they had not prepared for. And that is because the Messenger وسلم, warned us that not every aspect of knowledge is beneficial. And therefore we ask the question, what are the signs? That the knowledge which I am pursuing, you are pursuing, is taking us in the right direction. A realization that we need, dear brothers and sisters, before we pursue, before we memorize any more texts, before we attend any more Friday sermons, before we attend any other halaqa or deliver it. These are questions that must be answered. What are the signs? They are many, therefore we will only be discussing four of them, perhaps the most famous of them, and perhaps the most important as well. The first of these signs, beneficial knowledge is that which brings about in the heart of people true fear of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. This is undoubtedly the chief of all signs. Allah said, it is only the people of knowledge from amongst the slaves of Allah who truly fear Him. They recognize Him. They understand His divine names and majestic attributes. 
They have understanding of the halal and the haram and the seerah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thus their heart is filled with awe, oh, hayba, fear, rahba, hope, raja in Allah jalla jalalu. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he would also say, knowledge is not about memorizing many narrations. Knowledge is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would also say, sufficient is the fear of Allah as a product of knowledge. And sufficient is self-admiration as a product of ignorance. If the knowledge that you are amassing on a weekly or a daily basis, may Allah bless you, is not restraining you from missing salah or delaying it. If your knowledge is not encouraging you to revisit your finances and your investments and your God-given hours, how you are investing those. If your knowledge is not preventing you from raising a bruising fist at your spouse, if your knowledge is not preventing you from answering back at your mother and father, then this is not the type of knowledge that will rescue you on the day of judgment. Knowledge is that voice that you constantly hear in your head, in your heart, in your soul speaking to you never leaves you, always advising you, rearranging your priorities, managing your actions, managing your reactions, knocking sense into our heads. The moment we raise a hand to haram, or our eyes to haram, or our ears or wealth to haram, knowledge screams at you, it says, what are you doing? Don't you fear Allah? Have shyness of Allah, where is your haya? This is the benefit of knowledge. It is such a loyal advisor. It is such an honest friend, never leaves you alone, taking you by the hand, introducing you to the majesty of Allah, reminding you of his divine names and his perfect attributes so that you never consider doing a haram and when you do, your knowledge says, wait, it screams at you and it stops you in your tracks. This is the purpose of knowledge. And if a person's knowledge is not doing that for him, then it could be that you have fallen into one of the four categories that the Messenger وسلم, was very afraid of. He would say, Oh Allah, I ask you to protect me from knowledge that doesn't benefit me. And I ask you to protect me from a heart that stays hard. And I ask you to protect me from having desires that never fill. And I ask you to protect me from a dua that you do not answer. A person whose knowledge does not cause him to fear Allah and change his life, his knowledge is of no use. His heart is hard. His desires will not be filled and his dua will hardly ever be answered. Thus your knowledge may be growing, but is it causing you to grow? This is the first major sign of beneficial knowledge taking to Jannah or knowledge that is taking to another destination. It's increasing you in the fear of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. The second sign Beneficial knowledge is that which commands application there and there. It encourages you to do something about it immediately, without any delay. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he said, I have not written and memorized any of the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu except after I first apply it. Imam Ahmad memorized one million narrations. How many did he apply there for? This was the purpose of knowledge according to them. Immediate application. How beautiful were the words of Al-Hasan al-Basri who said a person in the past when he used to begin a path of knowledge, immediately you would see the influence of knowledge upon his eyes, upon his speech, upon his actions, upon his salah, upon his humility, upon his minimalism and rejection of dunya. Immediate application, not with the intention of teaching it to others, teaching it to himself to save himself, to reform himself before anybody else. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he said, if I was to spend my daylight hours acting like a fool and spending my night hours acting like an ignorant person, then what is the purpose of the knowledge that I am amassing? These are two signs for knowledge that is of true benefit. Number one, it brings about fear, khashya of Allah Jalla Jalla. Fear that you feel within you. And the second of this beneficial knowledge is that it brings about immediate action. You'd see the change in your reflection, in your speech, and your dress, and your ibadah. The third sign that knowledge is of benefit and will take a person, inshaAllah, to Jannah, is that it produces within this person a genuine sense of humility that is real. This person, when offered two choices, will always take the safer of the two options. This person not only stays away from the haram, 
But this person will also stay away from the doubtful gray areas of Islam as well. This person, because of his knowledge that has brought about humility, is also not afraid to say, sorry, I don't know the answer to your question. Listen to the description of Ibn Sirin the Tabi'i. They said that whenever he would be asked about a question of halal or haram, his color would change, his demeanor would alter, and it would become as if it's a different personality that we previously knew. He was afraid to give an answer on behalf of Allah and his messenger. Ata ibn Abi Rabah, he said, I have met people whom when they would be asked a question of halal and haram, their bodies would begin to shake. Fearing that they will say something that will displease Allah Jalla Jalala. They said whenever Imam Malik would be asked about a question of halal and haram, he would look like he was a man who was standing between paradise and hell. This is the third sign that knowledge is of benefit. It produces real humility. You don't see yourself as great. As for the fourth, and we will conclude with this, beneficial knowledge is that knowledge that causes you to run away from fame. You fear the praise and admiration of people because you realize that an atom's weight of self-admiration can cause mountains of good deeds to come crashing down on the day of judgment. So the people of beneficial knowledge, they run away from fame. And how beautiful therefore was the dua of Ibn Muhayriz who would say, Oh Allah, I ask you to give me a dull reputation. They didn't want people to give them big titles. These are some of the signs of beneficial knowledge. It makes him great in the eyes of Allah, but very small in his own eyes. And that's why my brothers, my sisters seek knowledge. Alhamdulillah, the opportunities that you have, Wallahi didn't exist in the past. Now, mashallah, you've got so many lectures in English, internet, courses online, and so much going on. Take advantage of that.